Click tracking is one of the first topics that you learn when you start working with Google Tag Manager. You have click triggers, click variables, but what if you are in a situation where click variables don't contain any useful information? You have no click ID, no click classes, or anything else. Then you have to go advanced. Here I have a demo website, and on this website, a Google Tag Manager container is installed. The container is pretty basic. I just have Google Analytics tag. If you have no idea how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. Also in this container, I have a trigger that fires on all link clicks. So nothing fancy right here. And then also I have enabled the click related variables. So I have click classes, click element and all that stuff that can be enabled by clicking the configure button. Let's take a look at first scenario. So on this page at the very bottom, I have these two links that I want to track. I will call them contact links. Now let's see what does Google Tag Manager track automatically when we click these links. I will go to Google Tag Manager, hit preview, then I will paste the URL of the page and click connect. Now I will click the first link and the second link. Then go to Google Tag Manager and here I see the first link click and the second one. If I click the first link click and go to variables, I will see that we have click URL, we have click text, but we don't have any ID and we don't have any classes. I don't want to track link clicks based on click URL in this case, because let's say that these URLs are also available on other places of the website. And I don't want to track those other links. I just want to track these two particular links and I want to treat them as contact links. If I do the right click right here on the first link and then click inspect, I will see that there are no classes, no IDs, but both of these links are children of another element, which is called footer. This is the diff with that class. So by using a thing called CSS selectors, I could write a bit more complex triggering condition where I will be looking only at those link clicks that happen on children of this footer element. To pull this off, you would need to know at least the fundamentals of CSS selectors. If you want to do that, I have a link to a documentation. I will post a link to it below the video. And here are various examples where you can learn more about how to target certain elements that require more advanced solutions. Now let's go back to the website and I want to emphasize that we are going to track link clicks, which means that we are going to track a elements. And these elements must be direct children of another element with the class footer. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, and we will make our link click trigger more specific. Let's click the trigger. And instead of tracking all link clicks, we will track some link clicks. And here we are going to use click element because click element is the variable that works with CSS selectors. You have to select click element, then match a CSS selector. You also have an option does not match CSS selector, but in this case, we want to match a CSS selector. And then we are going to write that actual selector. So first we are going to track A elements because those are links. That's why we type A. And then that A must be a direct child of another element with the class footer. In CSS, class starts with a dot. So dot footer, then this means direct child. So this is a child, this is a parent. And then we will rename this trigger. Let's say link click contact links in footer or something like that. Click save. Then I will create a tag that will send an event to Google Analytics 4. Let's click new, then tag configuration, Google Analytics and GA4 event. Here I will paste the measurement ID. It's the same measurement ID that I have in my main Google tag. You can find it by going to GA4 admin, then data streams, select website data stream, and then copy the measurement ID from right here. Then we can give it a name. I will name this, for example, contact link click or something like that. And then I can send additional parameters with this event. For example, what was the text of the link and what was the URL of the link? This is available in Google Tag Manager with help of click variables. So I could use click URL variable because it returns some value and then click 
text right here. So I can go to Google Tag Manager and add two parameters. When it comes to click tracking, there are several recommended parameters by Google. The first one is link underscore URL and the other one is link underscore text. Then we will insert the variables. The first one is for the link URL. So we will insert the click URL. And then here I will insert the click text. Then in the triggering, I will click anywhere and select my link click trigger. And finally, I will name this tag can be named something like this click save. And let's test if this is working. Let's click preview to refresh the preview mode. And then I can go to the website, scroll down, click the first link, then I can click the second link. Then for testing purposes, I can click any other link, for example, this link, because on this link, the tag should not fire. And let's go to the preview mode. This is the first link click and my tag fired. Then on this link click, the tag also fired, but on this, the tag should not fire. And it did not fire because it is displayed in this section. Right now, when I'm recording this video, there is a bug in Google Tag Manager preview mode. Sometimes the tags are displayed as unknown tag type, but this is just a bug in the preview mode. The tag actually fired. And if you, for example, try to test this maybe after several hours, then this unknown tag type will disappear. So since my tags have fired, I can check if Google Analytics received those events. That's why I will go to GA4, then admin, and in the admin section, I will go to debug view. And here I have two contact link click events. The first one, I can click it and I see link text, link URL, and I also can click the second event and check its values. So this was the first scenario where knowing CSS selectors is very useful. And as I've said, take a look at this documentation that I posted below the video, because there are more examples of CSS selectors and you can write conditions based on different structure of the HTML elements. For example, this is quite common. This is quite common. Then this is helpful. This is helpful as well. Also attribute. CSS selectors are very useful. So definitely learn these, at least get familiar with them. And yeah, hopefully this example gave you some direction what to learn next. Now let's take a look at another situation. Here I have a list of travel packages. And let's say that I want to track when visitors click these buttons. But together with those button clicks, I also want to fetch the name of the package which means that if the visitor clicks this button, then I want to track this. If the visitor clicks this button, I want to fetch this name and so on. These buttons are not links. That's why link click trigger in Google Tag Manager won't work. I will need to create another trigger. Let's go to triggers, then new trigger configuration and all elements. For now, I will track all clicks. That's why I will just name this like that and click save. Then I will refresh the preview mode and then go to website and click the first button. This button actually doesn't do anything on this demo page, but let's imagine that then I saw more details about this offer. Then I will click this button and I can go to the preview mode. Here I have to click events. I select the first one, go to variables and I see the class of the button. I see the text, but nothing else. There is nothing here related to the name of the package. That's why we are going to do a thing called DOM traversal. We will have to actually kind of crawl the structure of website elements and then pick the correct data that we want based on the button click. First, I will do the right click and inspect to see the structure of the website elements. And this is the button. Well, let me make this more visible. So this is the button right here. If I hover my mouse, it is highlighted right here. Then if I go higher a bit, I see that this block shows the entire travel package. I mean, the entire travel package is highlighted. And then here, I also see travel package details. And inside these details, I have the text of the package. If I hover my mouse here, the beach paradise is highlighted. Now I cannot just simply use CSS selectors because this button right here, its parent is this one, but this element is not a parent. It is a sibling of this element right here. 
So I cannot just simply use CSS selectors. We will have to use two methods. First, when this button is clicked, we will climb up a bit to this entire element. And then from this element, we will go down until we reach this travel package text or travel package name to be more specific. But everything will be happening from the button click because this button that we clicked, it will be our starting point or we can call this as a reference point. When the element is clicked, that element is available as a click element variable. Even though it is displayed like that in the preview mode, it's actually an object that contains a lot of stuff about the element that was clicked. So once this is clicked, then we will start our traversal journey here, and then we will go down right here. To do this, we will have to use the custom JavaScript variable in Google Tag Manager. I understand that some of these things might be way too complicated if you have never worked with JavaScript, but let's be honest. I mean, it's not a very simple topic. And if you want to learn more or understand the logic behind what we are doing in this video, then you can take a look at my JavaScript for Google Tag Manager course. I will post a link to it below the video. Now let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and then click new. In the variable configuration, click anywhere, and then select custom JavaScript. Custom JavaScript as a variable always requires an anonymous function, which means that it has no name. It's just a function that returns something. So the function will have to contain the return statement. Let me zoom in a bit to make this more readable. But before we return something, we will select our starting point. Our starting point will be the button that is clicked or as I've said, the click element variable. That's why we can declare a variable, let's say clicked button. And to this variable, we will assign, at least for now, the click element variable. I started typing double curly braces and then I can see this drop down where I can select the variables in my container. Now that we have assigned the click element variable to this variable right here, then we can do something with it. First of all, we have to climb up from this button right here higher to this element right here. Now, why we are doing this? Because look at the structure. This is what we have clicked. This is the parent. And then its parent is this one right here. Think of these as folders in your laptop. You have this folder, then you have this folder, then you have this folder right here. So we first climb from here to here. And how can we climb? Well, in JavaScript, there is a very useful method called closest. We can climb up and find the closest element with the class travel package. And that's what we are going to do. So clicked button dot closest because clicked element is our starting point. And based on the starting point, we are going to look for the closest element. And that method accepts a CSS selector of the closest element that we are looking for. We are looking for the closest travel package element. This is a class. That's why we are going to enter a CSS selector that starts with a dot and then travel package exactly as it is displayed right here. So if the visitor clicks the element, then with this code, we would get the data of this element. But we now want to go down the DOM and find another element which has the class travel package name. Our goal is to fetch the travel package name, which is right here. So we want to fetch the element with the class travel package name. All of these travel packages right here have the same code structure. All of them have travel package class, all of them have this travel package name and so on. That's why I will copy this travel package name and I will use another method, which is called query selector. So closest climbs up. We start here and we climb up here. Now query selector goes down the structure of this document. So we will then enter another CSS selector like this. We climb up to the main travel package element and then we go down until we reach the travel package name element which is right here and if we want to get its text we just have to use the following parameter which is called inner text it's the inner text of this particular element alternatively you could access the id i have the id in this case that's why i could technically enter id like that but i want to get the inner text 
And this is what we are going to use in the return statement. This variable will take the date of the clicked element, then it will climb up to the closest travel package element, and then once it reaches there, then we will go down until we reach the travel package name element and we pick its inner text. That's the journey in this code right here. Now let's name this variable. By the way, if you enroll in my JavaScript course for Google Tag Manager, then you will have access to my Sandbox website and you will be able to play a lot with various custom codes and to actually make them work. And that way you would practice your JavaScript skills. Anyway, let's go back to this example, save the variable, and then we will test if this is working. I will click preview to refresh the preview mode. The preview mode has connected. And now if I click the first button, the second button, and the third button, let's see what we have. This is the first click event. I have variables. And then here we have the name of the first travel package, then the second travel package, and the third travel package. This is the same bug that we have with the tag, so ignore it. The variable still works just fine. The final step would be for me to use this variable in another GA4 tag, so I can do that. First, I will go to triggers to make my trigger more precise. Right now it fires on all clicks, but I want it to fire only on those clicks where, let's say, click classes equals travel package button, because that's the class of the button right here. So I will copy this and then choose click classes equals this. Then we can name this trigger and then click save. Then I will go to tags. I will make a copy of this contact link click tag because it will save me some time. So you can click three dots right here, copy, and then we can rename this, let's say to view travel package or something like that, then change the name here. And then we don't have the link URL because the button is not a link, but instead we could enter, let's say travel package name. I just came up with this parameter and its value could be our JavaScript variable. We can leave the text, but it's not necessary. And then in the triggering, instead of link click trigger, I will select the travel package button trigger. Click save. And let's test if this is working. First, let's click preview. Then I go to the website and click the first button, second, and third. In the preview mode, on the first click, the tag fired. Here, the tag fired as well, and the tag fired on the third event too. Now, if I click anywhere else, the tag should not fire. For example, I can click on the title or maybe on this link, and then here, on these events, the tag did not fire. On this link click, also the tag did not fire. So far, so good. Now, the final step is to check the debug view. And here I have the view travel package event. I can click it and here, travel package name is visible. There are some delays in the debug view. That's why it might take more time for other events to appear, but eventually they will be displayed. Also speaking of the travel package name, it's a custom parameter. Google Analytics has no idea what this parameter is. That's why if you want to use this in your reports later, you would need to register this as a custom dimension. If you want to learn more about GA4 custom dimensions, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. And that's how we can do advanced click tracking with Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.